Denver 7 On Demand is brought to you by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. Good morning, I'm Nicole Brady. And I'm Molly Hendrickson with the latest from Denver 7. Overnight, many people across the metro woke up to the sound of hail hitting their homes. It made many streets look like they were covered in snow. Most of the hail has melted, but plenty of viewers called the Denver 7 newsroom overnight asking if the hail could damage their cars or homes. Denver 7's Sean Toll explains this hail was probably too small to have any major impact. It's just a little after seven here in Denver's Wash Park, and you can see all around me the hail that came down last night. Lots of pea and marble-sized hail in this part of town, and lots of leaves and branches down because of all the hail. Now, a lot of people are going to be worried about their cars and roofs being damaged by all this hail, but it takes an inch to an inch and a quarter to cause damage from the hail. And obviously, this hail is not big enough for that, so hopefully most people are not waking up to damage this morning. Now, if you, we have viewer videos coming in. Now, if you take a look at this, this man sent us a picture of hail coming in his door. That's how much hail we got overnight. It piled up inches in some places. And can, here's a look at also driving earlier today on the highway where you can see that clearly it looked like you were driving through snow. So there will be a lot of slush on the side of the roads today and it will be wet for sure. So be careful for everyone who's out there. Sean Toll, Denver 7. All right, meteorologist Lisa Hidalgo has a look at what's coming next. It, we have a little blue sky right now, yeah. which is nice, but we had quite a bit of that hail. Again, it was small, but it was a good two to three inches in some spots. And right now you can see at City Park this morning, the grass is nice and green. You may have to check the flowers uh, with the hail rolling through overnight. You might have seen some damage. Right now, though, we're going to see an increase in clouds, and we're expecting a wet and slushy drive through the morning. More scattered showers expected this afternoon. And as far as temperatures go, it's going to be about 25 degrees cooler than normal. We're looking at a slight risk for a little severe weather as well across the far eastern plains east of Denver. The bigger storms and really all the severe weather that we're going to see is likely going to be well off to the east of our state. But again, it is going to clip our eastern plains a little closer to Lyman and then east toward Burlington. So we'll have to watch and track that threat for a little severe weather. Some larger hail and damaging winds later this afternoon. It was a pretty active weekend for us. Now today highs are only going to be in the low 50s. It's cooler. Clouds are already starting to rebuild and we're expecting again some scattered showers through the afternoon we're likely going to see for the Rockies game tonight that chance for a few showers and it's going to be pretty cool by first pitch at about 640 we're expecting some low 50s will drop into the 40s during the game now for tomorrow on Wednesday highs only in the mid to upper 50s so we're going to be well below normal 57 typically we're in the 70s upper 70s and some of the record highs this time of year are in the 90s so we're obviously well below that looking ahead to the end of the week things will then start to to warm up and dry out. We'll still see a few late day thunderstorms both Wednesday and Thursday, but by the weekend it does get a little drier and back to 70s. You guys even warmer for the first of next week, closer to 80 by Monday. Well, this morning, the Colorado community is remembering a Boulder Mountaineer killed after reaching the top of Mount Everest. 62 year old attorney Christopher Coolish passed away on his way down from the summit at about 26,000 feet. We are working to gather details on any funeral arrangements for Coolish. Last week, climbers on Everest Everest got stuck in a traffic backup on the way to the summit. The altitude in that area is the reason it's known as the death zone. 11 people have died on Everest this year. A trail in Aspen has been closed after a bear bit a woman hiking yesterday. The woman said she and her husband were hiking on the Hunter Creek Trail when they saw the bear walking toward them. The pair stepped off the trail to let the bear go by, but the bear charged her, bit her leg, and ran off. Wildlife officers say the woman was not seriously hurt because the bear was aggressive. Wildlife officers say the bear will be put down if it's caught. This legislative session, state lawmakers voted to give local communities more control over the oil and gas industry. Tonight, Broomfield could be the first city to take advantage of that new power. Denver 7's Micah Smith explains the moratorium on oil drilling that Broomfield is considering. Specifically, under the new law, Broomfield City Council members could implement a six-month moratorium on new permits. Tonight, there will be a public hearing. Then, City Council is expected to hold a second and final vote on the moratorium. Two weeks ago, during the last City Council meeting, the first vote was unanimous in support of the moratorium. During the meeting, several Council members said, this is not about making the oil and gas industry feel unwelcome in Broomfield, but taking time to figure out what's best for the city. But the oil and gas industry says Broomfield could scare the industry away if they implement a moratorium. This moratorium sends a message to our industry and our workers that we are not welcome. And it's in everyone's best interest 
that we call a timeout and we put the rules in place and everybody understands what the rules are instead of them moving forward with some combination of old and new and not sure what the expectations are. One other municipality, Adams County, passed a temporary moratorium, but that was back in March before this new law. So if Broomfield passes this moratorium, it will in fact become the first municipality to do so under the new oil and gas regulations. Reporting in Broomfield, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Today, concerned parents of students in the Douglas County School District can weigh in on how to spend $10 million that was recently approved to boost school safety. The money was approved following the deadly STEM school shooting in Highlands Ranch. The public hearing is 2.30 this afternoon. Also up for discussion whether to more than double the number of school resource officers from 11 to 27. That would cost around $3 million a year. Governor Polis has a busy day ahead today. The governor will hold four bill signing ceremonies around the metro today to sign dozens of new bills into law. Among those being signed today is the ban the box bill. It will remove a box on job applications requiring a person to disclose his or her criminal history. Of course, that still could come up during a background check. Also today, the governor will sign a bill to allow local governments to create their own minimum wages. In Colorado, the minimum wage is 1110 per hour, but that number will bump up to $12 next year. Even though school is mostly out, the summer meal program starts today. Kids 18 and under can get free breakfast breakfast and lunch at dozens of locations across the state. The sites are in areas where most of the children are on free and reduced lunches already during the school year. So many are at school districts or community centers. And to find a food location near you, just go to the Food Bank of the Rockies website, click on Summer Food, and enter your zip code. And Denver 7 is partnering with the Food Bank this summer to give books to kids at two of the mobile bank's pantry locations. So we have everything from um, uh, kind of infant and, and early reader um, books all the way up to some young adult teen um, novels. So there will be something for everyone, over 4,000 books that we'll be distributing, and we'll ask the kids to pick their books. Oh, it sounds fun, and Denver 7 will be giving out books today at Hinkley High School from 9 till noon. Then we'll be at Hinkley High on the second and fourth Tuesday of each month this summer. We'll also be at Dick's Sporting Goods Park on the first and third Friday of each month. The public is being asked to weigh in on how to manage the elk at a popular open space park. For the last two years, Boulder County has allowed limited elk hunting at Rabbit Mountain Open Space near Lyons. County and state wildlife officials want to continue the program for a third year. Boulder County commissioners will hold a public hearing on the elk hunting plan at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And with even more snow falling in the high country right now, ski resorts are showing no signs of closing anytime soon. Nope. Aspen is extending its season even longer. It'll be open this Saturday and Sunday, and that is not your only option. A Basin plans to stay open through the weekend of June 16th. That could go even longer depending on how much more snow falls. Uh, Breckenridge will also be open the first two weekends of June. And we checked A Basin's history. The latest closing they have ever had is August 10th. Wow. Well, thank you for watching Denver 7 Now. Check back here later today for another update and download the free Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. Have a great day.